Good day, class, and uh, welcome to uh, Chapter 4 of the Law on Obligations. We're going to be tackling extinguishment of obligations. So this is uh, Part 1. We're going to focus on uh, payment. So uh, these are the modes of uh, extinguishment of obligations. So we have a uh, payment or performance. Uh, this is the first part. Next, we have a uh, loss of the thing due. We have condemnation or remission of the debt. We have confusion or merger of rights of a creditor and debtor. We have uh, compensation. We have novation. Now this enumeration is, uh, is not uh, exclusive, right? Because we have other causes of extinguishment of obligations, such as annulment, rescission, fulfillment of a resolutory condition, or prescription. So these are the causes of extinguishment of obligations. Now, I learned an acronym when I was uh, reviewing for the CPA board exams. Our reviewer told us uh, that a good mnemonic for this, for, for the mode of extinguishment is Polacanu, it's PLC N. Now there are three C's. So uh, PLC, it's PLC C C N. Polacanu. So P, we have a we have payment or performance. We have loss of the thing due. There's condemnation. There's confusion. There's compensation, and there is novation. And these are the causes of extinguishment other than those mentioned earlier. There's annulment, rescission, fulfillment of a resolutory condition, prescription, death of party in case of an obligation requiring personal service, mutual desistance or withdrawal, arrival of a resolutory period, we have compromise, impossibility of fulfillment, and happening of a fortuitous event. So let's focus on payment. What is payment? Payment may consist not only in delivery of money, but also the giving of a thing other than money, the doing of an act or not doing of an act. Payment and performance are synonymous. So we have to disabuse our minds, class, because you know, uh, before law school, when we say payment, what 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 thing comes to mind first when we say payment? It's always money, right? But that's not the case for purposes of our class. When we say payment, it's not only money. Payment means performance. So it's the giving of a thing, the doing of a thing. So that is payment, all right? That is payment in its legal sense. Payment does not only mean payment of money. Payment also means performance. So let's keep that in mind. So uh, when is the debt considered paid? So we need the integrity of the prestation. So you should know what the prestation is. So integrity, what does integrity mean? Dapat buo. No? Ang sinasabi sa integrity, you know, uh, integrity, the concept of integrity is also applied where? Integrity is applied in uh, morality. No? Ang sinasabi, integrity, how do you know if you have integrity? Ang sinasabi sa morality, integrity means doing the right thing even when no one is looking. Right? That's integrity for you. But for purposes of our class, integrity means uh, wholeness. It should be complete. Right? The thing or service must be completely delivered or rendered. Partial or irregular performance will not produce the extinguishment of the obligation. Hindi pwedeng kulang yan. Dapat buo. Dapat tama. Example, S obliged himself to deliver 100 sacks of rice to B. S delivered only 90 sacks. In this case, there is still no payment made by S. B can refuse to pay for the 90 sacks if S does not deliver what is lacking. B cannot be compelled by S to accept partial performance. B can refuse acceptance and delivery of partial performance. 
So this example is very illustrative of this concept. Okay? Kung ang, kung ang obligation mo ay 100 sacks of rice, hindi mo pwede pilitin yung creditor na tanggapin muna yung 90 sacks of rice kasi kasi yun lang muna, tapos bukas na lang yung sampo. Hindi mo pwede pilitin yung creditor doon. The creditor may refuse. The creditor may refuse to accept uh, the 90 sacks of rice kasi kulang. Alright? Ikaw bilang debtor, hindi mo pwedeng pilitin yung creditor na tanggapin yung kulang. Alright? So the prestation must be whole. As the creditor, you cannot be compelled. Hindi ka pwedeng pilitin na tanggapin yung kulang na binabayad sa'yo. So identity of the prestation, the very prestation due must be delivered or performed. Hindi pwedeng uh, ibang bagay yung i-deliver. So the very prestation must be delivered. But now we have a certain exception with uh, substantial compliance in good faith. All right? So in case of uh, substantial compliance, the obligee is benefited. Now we're talking about substantial compliance. No? This is an exception to, to the general rule that the prestation must be complete. There is a substantial performance when the important or essential part of the contract has been performed and only a small or minor part thereof has not been carried out. All right? So how do you know there's substantial compliance? Dapat the important or essential part of the contract has been performed. Okay? So what are the requisites for substantial compliance? There must be substantial performance and the obligor must be in good faith. Right? So the obligor must be in good faith. This is a very important requisite. Example, S obliged himself to deliver 500 sacks of cement to B for a certain price. However, despite diligent efforts on his part, S was able to deliver only 400 bags because of cement shortage. Now look at this class. The cement shortage. Was it the debtor's fault? No, oh, all right. So S wants to comply with his obligation. He could not do so for reasons beyond his control. So he is in good faith. So S can recover as though there had been complete delivery less the price of 100 bags. All right. So C S the man can uh, collect on the 400 bags of cement. Hindi naman pwedeng uh, kukollect na siya ng 500 sacks, uh, ng equivalent na 500 sacks, pero 400 lang yung binigay niya. S must show that he attempted in good faith to comply with the obligation. All right? So this is a substantial cl uh, compliance class. Okay? So kanina, dun sa integrity of the prestation, assuming na walang cement shortage, pero 400 lang yung binibigay ni S in this case, the creditor, B, can refuse to accept and can refuse to pay for the 400 sacks of rice. That's the general rule. However, in case of substantial compliance, ito yung requisites na meron substantial performance, 400, no? 100 na lang yung kulang. Tapos good faith naman yung obligor. He is not negligent. So, pwede, no? So, pwedeng makarecover yung, uh, yung debtor pag substantial compliance. Obligation is extinguished when or irregular performance is accepted. It makes sense. So this is founded on the principle of estoppel. So class, uh, you are business students, you will be encountering estoppel, the principle of estoppel so many times. Estoppel means you are precluded from, uh, from, from asserting a right no? because, because of your actions. So, for example, um, if the payment is incomplete or irregular, the creditor may properly reject it. But in case of acceptance, the law considers that he waives his or her right. So, balik tayo dun sa example kanina, dun sa integrity na prestation. Alam mong kulang yung binibigay sa'yo, pero tinagap pa rin. Dahil sa pagtanggap po na yun, class, he cannot later on claim na dapat hindi ko tinagap yan kasi kulang. Hindi pwedeng ganun. Parang touch move ka. No? 
So that is the principle of estoppel. You don't say touch move in legal terms. You say you are estopped. You are estopped from, uh, you are already estopped from, uh, re from uh, rejecting. From, reject from rejecting the goods because you have accepted them. Okay? Kasi kung alam mo na kulang pero tinanggap mo pa, you are stop. So requisites for a stop of irregular or incomplete performance. The obligee knows that the performance is incomplete or irregular. Alam ng debtor na kulang. Ah, sorry, alam ng uh, creditor pala. Alam ng creditor na kulang yung binabayad sa kanya. Okay? Alam ng creditor, the obligee. The obligee accepts the uh, performance without expressing any protest or objection. Hindi siya nagre-reklamo, yung creditor. Alright? Tinanggap niya na hindi siya nagre-reklamo. Wala siyang protest, wala siyang objection. Example, X agreed to paint the house of Y. According to their agreement, X would use a particular brand of paint. X used a different brand of paint. Y knew that X used a different brand of paint. Y accepted the performance of X without expressing any protest or objection. So, ganyan class na, if, uh, if, ano, if you are, let's say, creditor ka, tapos pinabayaran ka na kulang, or mali yung dinadeliver sa'yo, you have to object. You have to object. Dapat magreklamo ka at the earliest instance. Kasi pag matagal mo tinago yung gamit, tapos hindi mo naman, hindi ka nagreklamo, hindi mo binabalik, basta tinanggap mo, then you are stopped already. Okay? Why do we have the principle of estoppel? Kailangan din yan. Kasi kung walang ganyan, mangyayari, pwede yung maling, ano, yung maling gamit na deliver sa'yo, pwede ang kinin mo na matagal. Tapos magsawa ka na, saka mo palang isasorry, hindi pwede yun. Okay? At the earliest instance na alam mong irregular or incomplete yung performance, you have to object. So, anong sabihin na object? In the object, ha? you have to object. Object means ireklamo mo, magreklamo ka. Persons for whom the creditor must accept payment. Number one, the debtor. Any person who has an interest in the obligation like a guarantor. Alright, anong role ng guarantor? Role ng guarantor, pag hindi makabayad si debtor, makabayad si guarantor. A third person who has no interest in the obligation when there is a stipulation that he can make payment. All right. The creditor may refuse payment by a third person. Okay. Let's say may utang ka sa kaibigan mo. All right. Tapos ikaw may iba kang kaibigan na gusto bayaran yung utang mo. Eh ayaw tanggapin ng ano ng inyotangan mo. Yung inutangan mo ba, can he, can he refuse that payment? The answer is yes, he can refuse. Okay, because the creditor may dislike or distrust the third person. That's uh, that's a very simple reason. No? Kasi ayaw din niya na magkautang siya ng loob dun sa, sa, sa magbabayad para dun sa original debtor. So that is the creditor's uh, discretion kung tatagapin niya or hindi. So what is the effect of payment made by a third person? Ibang tao yung nagbayad ng utang. So there are two uh, situations. Number one, what if the payment was made by a third person without the knowledge or against the will of the debtor? Hindi alam ng debtor o kaya hindi payag yung debtor pero tinanggap pa rin niya. E tinanggap ng ano, tinanggap ng creditor yung bayad. So what will happen? The payer can recover from the debtor only in so far as the payment has been beneficial to the latter. So this is very important class, no? So makaka-recover pa rin naman yung third person na nagbayad. But only in so far as the payment has been beneficial to the debtor. Okay? Our recovery is only up to the extent or amount of the debt at the time of payment. So it's best to learn this by example. DOC, dapat alam niyo kung sino yung debtor, kung sino yung creditor. DOC, the sum of 1,000 pesos. As a stranger to the obligation, third person. 
offers to pay C 1,000 pesos and C accepts. Assuming D has already paid 400 pesos, right, for S is entitled to be reimbursed only for the amount of 600 pesos because it is only to that amount that D has been benefited. S can recover the extra 400 pesos from C. Okay? So ito class, no? So, uh, uh, nag-benefit lang kasi si D ng, uh, ano, ng uh, 600 pesos. Bakit? Kasi nagbayad na siya ng 400. Eh. eh, hindi alam ni S, no? Hindi alam ng third person. Na binayad pa rin ni ng third person, 1,000 pesos. Pwede ba na hindi na ma-recover ng third person yung pera? The answer is no. Pero hindi na pwede singilin yung debtor. Kung pwede na singilin, hindi yung, ano, yung creditor. That's, that's, that's already the solution in debity. Hindi naman pwede yung pangkawakan ni creditor yung 1,000 pesos plus yung 400 pesos na, binay na binayad na ni D. Mali naman yun. That's unjust enrichment. But hindi, hindi pwede yung problemahin ni, ano, ni third person Si, ano, si D. No? Kasi in the first place, nagbayad si third person na hindi alam or against the will of D, the debtor. What is the effect if made with the knowledge of the debtor? Ito naman, alam naman ng debtor na magbabayad yung third person para sa kanya. So in this case, no, the payer shall have the rights of reimbursement and subrogation. Subrogation class. Ito wala ito sa kanina. Wala ito dito sa number one. Okay, there is no subrogation here. Dito sa number two, merong subrogation. Okay? So the payer can recover what he has paid and to acquire all the rights of the creditor. So example, DOC the sum of 1 million pesos which is secured by a real estate mortgage. As a stranger to the obligation offers to pay C, 1 million pesos and C accepts. Assuming D has already paid 400,000, S is entitled to be reimbursed by D for the amount of 1 million pesos. All right? So kung ano yung kalaga na binayad ni ano ni uh, third person, pwede niya makuha ng buo yun sa debtor. Kahit na yung debtor eh nagbayad na pala na pauna. Okay? Because this is with the knowledge of the debtor. So uh S is entitled to be, to be reimbursed by D for the amount of 1 million pesos which he paid to C with all the rights of subrogation to the accessory obligations such as mortgage, guarantee, or penalty. If D does not reimburse him, S can foreclose the property and apply the proceeds of the auction sale to the amount owed him. So para ang naging creditor ng bago, yung third person na. Alright? Bakit ganun? Ganun, no? Because he has the rights of uh, subrogation. So yung uh, real estate mortgage executed in favor of the creditor, yung right nun, malilipat na dito sa third person na nagbayad. Okay? If the payment is made with the knowledge of the debtor. Dito sa kanina, walang ganyan, walang, sobro, walang subrogation. Hindi malilipat yung real, estate, yung real estate mortgage, walang transfer ng guarantor, etc. Dito sa number two, meron. So, subrogation uh, and reimbursement. Subrogation. The person who pays for the debtor is placed in the shoes of the creditor if payment is with the knowledge and consent of the debtor. The person can go after the mortgage, guarantors, if any. Reimbursement. The person who pays for the debtor without his knowledge or consent has bare right to be refunded to the extent of benefit of the debtor. The person cannot go after the mortgage or guarantor, if any. Okay. Effect of payment when incapacitated person. It is not valid unless such incapacitated person kept the thing paid or delivered or was benefited by the payment. In the absence of the benefit, the debtor may be made to pay again by the creditor's guardian or by the incapacitated person himself when he acquires or recovers his uh, capacity. The proof of benefit is incumbent upon the debtor who paid. Okay. Example, 
B delivers 1,000 pesos to C, a minor under guardianship, in payment of a debt. C loses 700 pesos of the money and gambling or due to negligence or ignorance. In this case, the payment should be considered as made only to the extent of 300 pesos. So, hassle, no? hassle mga pag-transact sa minor. Alright? Kasi kung sinugal daw niya, o kaya pag na ano, kung wala, edi ano, edi wala, bali wala yung payment mo. No? Effect of payment to a third person or wrong party. It is not valid except in so far as it has redounded to the benefit of the creditor. The benefit must be established by the person interested in proving this fact. Example, D is indebted to C in the amount of 1,000 pesos. On the date of maturity of the obligation, payment was made by D to T, a third person. In this case, D is still liable to C. If T delivered 700 pesos to C, the payment by D is valid only to the extent of 700 pesos. However, D must prove the delivery to C. So ito class, no? if you have to pay your debt, you have to make sure that you're paying to the right person. Dapat tama yung pinagbabayaran mo. Hindi pa rin sabihin mo, Oy, may utang ako sa, ano, uh, may utang ako sa sayo, pero sa kapatid mo na lang ibabayad ko. Pwede ba yun? The answer is no. Alright? Because that's a different person. That is, that is not the same creditor. Okay? So, wag kayong magabayad sa maling party. Alright? When benefit to creditor and uh, need not be proved by the debtor. When there is subrogation of the payee in the creditor's rights. Example, if after payment, T acquired C's right against T. Number two, ratification by the creditor. Number three, estopel on the part of the creditor. Through estopel, an admission or representation is rendered conclusive upon the person making it and it cannot be denied or disproved against the person relying thereon. So again, we have here the principle of estopel. Okay? Let's say, no, let's say, akala nung, ano, nung may utang sa'yo, eh, ano, ka... Baga, kay, parang ano, parang kasama mo sa negosyo itong taong ito. Alright? Dahil pina, pinaniwala mo sa kanya na magkasama kayo sa negosyo, no? tapos uh, may utang siya doon sa taong yon tapos sa'yo binayad. O, hindi, parang it's a safe, ano, it's a safe, uh, parang nagbayad mo rin sa kanya. Okay? If before payment, he has been led to believe by C's conduct or fault that he had authority to receive the payment even if he had in fact no such authority. So, ganun, no? so for example, may utang ka sa akin. Okay? Tapos meron akong kaibigan na sabi ko kasama ko sa business. Tapos uh, dahil naniwala ka sa akin, nagbayad ka ng na utang dun sa kaibigan ko. Kasi pinaniwala kita. Pag ganyan, I am a stop. Alright, so your payment to my friend would be valid payment to me. So that is a uh, estoppel. So let's go now to the Sean and Pago or the Sean and payment. So this is conveyance of ownership of a thing as an accepted equivalent of performance. Alright? So parang let's say may utang ka, no? tapos uh, wala kang pera na meron kang magandang property. No? Sabi mo rin sa creditor, ay baka pwedeng, ano, pwedeng wala na akong utang, bigay ko na lang itong property sa'yo. And that is essentially a novation class. No? So you're changing the terms of your payment. So pwede naman yung basta payag parehong parties. Hindi, pwedeng, hindi mo pwedeng pilitin yung creditor, hindi pwedeng pilitin ng creditor yung debtor na, mag, na magdasyon and pago na lang. Both parties have to have to agree. Okay? So, let's say, ang karaniwan nangyari dyan, o merong utang na hindi mabayaran, ginawa, uh, yung lupa na lang ang ibabayad, o kaya kotse, etc. So, that's conveyance of ownership of a thing as an accepted equivalent of performance. It's a special form of payment because it is not the ordinary way of extinguishing an obligation. 
an existing debt of money is satisfied not by payment of money, but by alienation of property. So yung property yung binibigay na lang. The conveyance is in effect a novation of the contract. Ano yung sabi ng novation? Novation means binago, new. No? Example, DOC, 30,000 pesos. To fulfill the obligation, D with the consent of C delivers a piano. If the piano is worth less than 30,000 pesos, the conveyance must be deemed to extinguish the obligation to the extent only of the value agreed upon unless the parties by their agreement have considered the piano as full payment. All right? Let's say nabenta yung piano na mura kalaga lang, may utang pa rin yung tao. Unless pinag-usapan nila na wala nang uh, utang pa. The performance of the obligation must be complete. There must be complete performance of the prestation in order to extinguish an obligation. The creditor cannot be compelled to accept partial performance. The debtor cannot also be compelled to make partial payments. All right? Hindi mo pwedeng pilitin, let's say, bibili ka ng kotse, tapos nagwawala ka kasi walang installment plan yung nagbebenta. Hindi nila, ano, uh, it, it is not your right. It is not your right to purchase things at installments. Okay? Let's go now to legal tender. If offered in the right amount, the creditor must accept as payment. So take note of the keyword here, must. Must, no? So kailangan. Kailangan tanggapin pag legal tender. So what is legal tender in the Philippines? All coins and notes issued by the PSP, by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. So we have, uh, your, we have your 20 peso bills, your 50 peso bills, 100 peso bills, 500 peso bills, 1,000 peso bills. All right? Those are legal tender. Sabihin, pag may binibili ka, no, tapos nagbabayad ka ng cash, hindi pwede, ano, hindi pwede tanggihan yung cash niya. They have to be accepted. So uh, all bills, 20 pesos and above, those are legal tender. Tapos meron ng limit class, no, pag coins. Up to 1,000 pesos for denominations of 1 peso, 5 peso, 10 peso coins. Up to 100 pesos for denominations of uh, 25 cents or less coins. All right? So class, no? Uh, bakit ito may limit, no? Yung sa coins. Kasi it's gonna be too burdensome. Let's say ang utang mo ay eh, 1 million pesos. Tapos dahil galit ka dun sa, ano, dun sa, sa inutangan mo, ang ibabayad mo, take 25 cents. Masyadong nakainsulto rin naman yun. Eh, no? Naka, nakasama naman ng loob yun. Alright? So ibig sabihin class, kung may dala kang sa damakmak na 25 cents, it's legal tender only up to 100 pesos. Beyond that, Beyond that, the creditor can refuse to accept the rest. No? Kasi pag bibilangin mo pa siya ng 25 cents, mali yun. It's only up to 100 pesos. No? Yung mga coins naman, yung mga one, I mean, sorry, mga 1 peso, 5 peso, 10 pesos, it's uh, legal tender up to 1,000 pesos. Okay? The creditor can refuse to accept payment of promissory notes, checks, bills of exchange, and other commercial documents because they are not legal tender. Hindi ka pwede magalit sa creditor. No, hindi mo siya pwede kasuhan kasi na, na ano na hindi mo siya pwede kasuhan na hindi siya tumatanggap ng check eh. Hindi mo siya pwede pilitin na tanggapin yung check mo because a check is not legal tender. The meaning of application of payments, uh, designation of the debt which should be applied uh, the payment made by the debtor who has various debts of the same kind in favor of one and the same uh, creditor. Right? So dito class, merong isang debtor, merong isang uh, creditor. So one, one to one. What are the requisites of application of payment? There must be one debtor and one creditor. There must be two or more debts. Okay? Two or more debts. But uh, in the same debtor and creditor. The debts must be of the same kind. The debts to which payment made by the debtor has been applied must be due. 
the payment made must not be sufficient to cover all the debts. Kulang yung pambayad ng debtor para sa lahat. Kaya magkakaroon ng application of payments. So what are the rules and application of payments? The debtor has the first choice. Okay? He must indicate at the time of making payment and not afterwards which particular debt is being paid. If in making use of his right, the debtor applied the payment to a debt, he cannot later claim that it should be applied to another debt. So this is a hierarchy of rules class. We we'll always follow number one. The debtor has the first choice. Ula yung choice ng debtor, number two. The right to make application once exercised is irrevocable unless the creditor uh, consents to the change. Three, if the debtor does not apply payment, the creditor may make the designation by specifying in the receipt which debt is being paid. So kung hindi pumili yung debtor, pwede pumili yung creditor. Number four, if the creditor has not also made the application or if the application is not valid, the debt which is most onerous to the debtor among those due shall be deemed to have been satisfied. So kung alin daw yung pinaka-onerous, kung pinaka-burdensome. Number five, if the debts due are of the same nature and burden, the payment shall be applied to all of them uh, proportionately. So interest is paid first before the principal. If the debt produces interest, the interest has to be paid first before payment of the principal unless the parties agree. Application of payment to most onerous debt. In case there is no application of payment made by the debtor and creditor, again, no, uh, remember the first rule. It is uh, the debtor's choice. Okay. So dito, walang choice yung debt or yung debtor, wala ding choice yung creditor. The payment shall be applied to the most onerous debt. So how do you know which debt is more onerous? Uh, debt is more onerous than another when it is more burdensome to the debtor. Let's look at these examples. An interest-bearing debt is more onerous than a non-interest-bearing debt even if the latter is an older debt. So kung merong interest daw yung, uh, ano, yung isang utang, tapos yung isang utang, wala namang, inter yung wala namang interest, ang mas onerous, ang mas onerous yung, yung interest-bearing debt. Kasi mas malaki yung babayaran kasi may interest ka. A uh, debt as a solidary debtor is more is more onerous than a debt as a joint debtor. Bakit class, no? A solidary debtor, iba ano yan? Uh, any, parang uh, any of the any of the solidary debtors can be demanded to pay the the whole the the, the whole thing due. The the whole uh, sum of money due. So that's more burdensome. Whereas kapag joint, it's uh, proportionate. No? Mas maliit. Uh, debt secured by a mortgage or by a pledge are more onerous than unsecured debts. So kung meron naka naka nakasangla pala yung bahay mo dun sa isang mong utang kaysa dun sa isang utang na walang nakasangla, mas onerous syempre yung may nakasanglang bahay, may nakasanglang property. Of two interest-bearing debts, the one with the higher rate is more onerous well, ob for obvious reasons. No? The higher interest rate there is, the higher the interest, the, the total, total amount to be paid. An obligation with a penal clause is more burdensome than one without a penal clause. The meaning of payment by session. Assignment or abandonment of all the properties of the debtor for the benefit of his creditors in order that the latter may sell the same and apply the proceeds thereof to the satisfaction of their credits. So, uh, ano pagkakaiba nito sa application of uh, payment? Sa payment by session, there are two creditors or more. Okay? So, requisites of payment by session, two or more creditors. The debtor must be partially insolvent. The assignment must involve all the properties of the debtor, and the session must be accepted by the creditors. So remember the, uh, these requisites. 
So lahat ng properties ng debtor kasama involved. The debtor must be partially insolvent. Pag totally insolvent, hindi, hindi, mag, hindi magkakaroon ng payment ng session. You know what insolvent is, right? Insolvent means mas malaki yung liabilities kesa sa assets. The effect of payment by session, unless there is a stipulation to the contrary, the assignment does not make the creditors the owners of the property of the debtor. So hindi nagiging may-ari yung mga assignees, yung mga creditors. Okay? Hindi sila nagiging ano, owners. Ina-assign sa kanila yung properties para mabenta. Okay? Tapos yung proceeds doon, hindi proportionate sa, sa utang nila. The creditors acquire the right to sell the properties of the debtor and apply the proceeds to their credits proportionately. Paano itong proportionately na ito? Hindi depende sa, ano, depende sa, sa amount ng utang nila. No? Doon ikaw compare yung natitirang, I mean yung price equivalent ng properties ng debtor pag nabenta. The debtor is released from his obligation only up to the net proceeds of the sale of the property assigned. The debtor is still liable for the balance. So liable pa rin yung debtor <clears throat> sa balance. What is tender of payment? Uh, it is the debtor's act of offering to the creditor the thing or amount due. Uh, meaning of consignation. The act of uh, depositing the thing or amount due with the proper court when the creditor does not want or cannot receive it. <clears throat> so that is a uh, consignation. It is always judicial. It generally requires a prior tender of payment. So dapat uh, attempt ka muna magbayad. No? Dapat nagbabayad ka muna dun sa creditor before you can go to a uh, consignation. That is the general rule. There are certain exceptions. <clears throat> so requisites of a valid consignation. Existence of a valid debt, which is due. Tender of payment by the debtor and refusal without justifiable reason by the creditor to accept the same. Number three, preliminary notice of consignation to persons interested in the fulfillment of the obligation, such as guarantors, mortgages, solidary uh, creditors. Uh, number four, consignation of the thing or sum due in the proper court. Number five, subsequent notice of consignation made to the interested parties. The costs of consignation. The creditor bears the expenses of consignation when properly made because there is fault or unjust refusal by the creditor to accept payment. So we end here. Uh, take care and uh, keep safe.